Okay, now we are ready for the first flight. And I would say before the first flight to verify uh, last time all uh, directions and all uh, compensations to make sure. And maybe it's a good thing not to do it only before the first flight, but before every flight. So let's try it. Uh, pitch up, pitch up, pitch down, pitch down, forward, backward. And you can see that the swash plate is quite slow. This is uh, quite usual on fly ballet systems. On the ground, the, the helicopter is not responding to the flash uh, to the swash plate, so it is uh, keeping some time on the, on the command uh, because uh, it's not flying. So don't be afraid from slow servos. So let's watch uh, right, aileron right, aileron left, tail left, tail right. Okay, we're okay. Now la next check is the compensation direction. This is okay, this is okay. All directions are okay. Tail, tail is also in the, this good direction. So we are ready for the first start. There's an urban legend in fly ballets saying that the takeoff is dangerous. No, it's not. It's just that you don't want to take off with a tilted swash plate. And in fly ballets, if you give some stick inputs on the ground, your swash plate does tilt more and stays tilted longer than with a fly bar. So you just have to wait for your f swash plate to be become level again, and you can start with confidence. Because the first start with a micro beast with a default setting would be really boring and not really demonstrating anything, I decided to do the first start with a very low gain value. So I reduced the gain to 10, which gives you now a very weak tail, so we can see it on the video. So watch the tail uh, after the takeoff. It is very weak, balancing around, and uh, when I give some stick, stick inputs, the stops are just going far away. On some pitch inputs, uh, also you can see the tail going to the right, so it is really not comfortable to fly like this. So I come back and will increase the gain. Remember that the default value is 50 to light uh, the diode G, and here I was with a value of 10. So now I will increase the gain back to uh, to the other side, very high in the range of the 70, to see what happens with the too high gain. So right now, okay. So now the gain, uh, the tail will be very hard, and you will see that the stops are very hard, like this, and uh, it, the tail doesn't move on pitch inputs. So you, one would think that everything is perfect. No, now we have to test a fast back, uh, backward flight to see if we have some oscillation. And here we had some oscillation. This that means that the gain is too high and we heard some woo 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 like this. It's difficult to hear on the video, but this is indicating that the gain is too high. So I will come back to the default wa value which was uh, 50 and uh, do the reverse flight test again. Okay, now like that. So now you will see uh, the actual first start with the default setting. So it would be like this. So the tail inputs are, are nice, and the tail is not too hard and is not making too much noise. Okay, let's do the first uh, backward test. But this time I will add some stick in, tail stick inputs to 45 degrees see how the heading hold is working and here you see that the 45 degrees are not very uh, stiff so I think I don't have enough heading hold but before adjusting this parameter we need to verify that the gain is correct so I'm doing a fast backward flight with a turn back in the wind to check if there's some oscillation and there's not, and the, head, the tail was holding quite good, so I think the gain on the radio is okay. So now I have to land and adjust the heading hold, which has to be done on the micro beast. I cannot do it on the transmitter like the gain. So for this, uh, we will have to push the button uh, until you have the blinking light and go in the menu parameter D 
which is the heading height adjustment. Just wait for the rotor to stop. Okay, I open the canopy, push the button to the blinking light, go to parameter D by pushing three times, and now with the tail stick I change the color to steady blue and I validate with the button. So now I am in heading hold high, very high adjustment. So let's check if now the 45 degree test in fast backward is better. So this is still working. This seems to hold quite nice. Let's try the backward. Okay. And now you see that the 45 degree are very stiff and they are not uh, lasting on the 45 degree. So this seems to be a good adjustment. Let's do some fast backward flight to see how it holds. Okay, even in, on some cyclic inputs, it doesn't seem to have any problems. So I think that the adjustment of the tail is not bad now. So now let's see what the last possible adjustment, which is potentiometer 3, is doing. This is so called the tail dynamic, and you can adjust it between some slow moving tail, like you would like to have on a scale shape, and some more spectacular tail like you want to have in hard 3D. So let me open the canopy and turn the potentiometer number 3 to very low. Okay, like that. It is about uh, to 6 o'clock now. And let's see how the tail reacts now. And remember, the tail is adjusted. This is just now adjusting the behavior of the tail, not the quality of the uh, servo. So here you see that the stops are slow, uh, slowing down and not very hard. But still they are very controlled by the heading hold. So let's go back now and put it on the other side which is uh, very high to see how feel the difference. And even with a slow, slow moving tail you still have the same tail performance in backward. So now I turn it completely to the other side, very high, and let's try the difference. So I didn't change anything on the gain, it is just the tail dynamic that you will see that is now much more spectacular. You see the stops are very hard and you can do very fast reversal movements and things like that. Okay, so this is just to be adjusted to the feeling of everybody. So I guess this finished the tail setup, and I don't know if you noticed, but all this has been done with the default setup on the cyclic, which means P1 and P2 in the middle. Now to give you an idea of what happens with a very low gain on, on the cyclic, I will reduce P1 to the minimum and uh, show you how the helicopter will behave. This will be quite difficult to see on the video because the helicopter will still fly quite good. The only thing is that the feeling will be less locked in the air and you will have to give more corrections on the stick to hover for instance. So let's give some cyclic inputs and it feels more sluggish, less connected. So it is not very nice. Another test to do is to do some fast forward flight and then suddenly give some 45 degree stick input, you like that. And you can feel here that there was a small delay, which is not uh, what we want to. It, it is only some feelings, it's very difficult to see on the video, but uh, it's not the way I like uh, the helicopter, so I come back and will increase the gain much more. Okay, let's stop the rotor, open the canopy, and now I turn the gain on the other side to uh, noon. And now the helicopter will, will be much more locked in the air, uh, the hovering will be uh, just without any stick input, and you can feel that uh, it is much more connected to your stick. 
if you have too much gain on cyclic inputs you would see some overshoot and uh, ringing back which is not the case yet and even with full gain it will not be the case on this logo so now it's already much more fun and you can see that you can do tons of flips in a row without six corrections so now let's do the fast forward test with 45 degree stick input and you will see it will be much more reactive like, just like that this is already quite nice but we can still now play on uh, the second potentiometer which is giving you the direct stick input from your stick to uh, the cyclic so this will allow you to in increase uh, reactivity around uh, the center stick and uh, adjust the delay you feel on the sticks if you have a too small P2 it will give you some delay to react if you have too high it will overreact and uh, come back so right now I turned it uh, on the low side and I will do again the fast forward test with the 45 degree stick input and you will feel now already some delay on it and uh, on the fast forward you will see that it will go up in some curve and not straight so what we want to do now is to incre increase this P2 on the other side to, de to see how it will react uh, now the it can even over react on the stick inputs meaning that you don't want to do so much okay stop the rotor Here again on P2 it's like P3, it's more feeling than anything else. So I turn it up to the other side and now you will feel more direct input to the cyclic which gives you more response around the center sticks and things like that. Okay, let's try. So go directly to the fast forward 45 degree and now you will see it will be sharp. Duck. Just like this. And this is how I like the helicopter now. You are, I have the cyclic adjusted to the sticks and still very locked in the air. So for me this is the right uh, parameter to set. You see the stops are very hard and you can feel them on the sticks. I think this finished now the microbeast setup, but I will still make you another flight video with some more general considerations.